It's a pleasure and a privilege to be on the street this afternoon again to try to draw to your attention the most important person in the whole of this universe. And of course we are talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about that, that one who is the savior of sinners, that one who will come back again in power and in glory. You know, we hear so much today about climate change. But you know, friends, the Bible talks about a great day of judgment when this present evil world shall be totally and completely burned up. Oh yes, there will be a global warming. Not that the scientists are telling us about it, but the Bible teaches us in, in Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, it tells us about that terrible, terrible day when the Lord Jesus shall return and he will return in glory and he will destroy this present evil world. It will be destroyed by fire like the old world was destroyed with a flood. This world, this present world, the world that you and I are in is destined to be destroyed by fire. How can we escape? How can we escape? The only way that we can escape is to have Jesus Christ as our Savior. Come unto me, he says, all ye that labor. Today as you pass by, I do not know you. You do not know me, but I know enough about you to realize that you're laboring. Oh, I don't mean you're carrying heavy boxes or heavy packages, but there's something on your mind that's troubling you. I know what it is because I used to experience it myself. What is it? You know you're not right with God. You have a guilty conscience. There's something in the back of your mind. You know that you have sinned and that you fall far short of the glory of God and you're frightened of death. Why are you frightened of death? You're frightened of death because you know that the moment you die you will be ushered into the presence of God and you're not ready, you're not meet, you're not fit to meet God. Friends, the solution is to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one who can take your sins away. Do you know this? No minister of the gospel can take your sins away. No priest can pardon you. No archbishop, no pope, none whatsoever can take away your sins. Only Jesus Christ can. And that's why we're here this afternoon to tell you the good news that he is offering to you all as you pass by this afternoon. He's offering you forgiveness of sins in the gospel. He began his public ministry by saying, repent and believe the gospel. What does repent mean? Repent means forsake your sins, turn away from your sins, turn away from your fornication, turn away from your blasphemy, turn away from your Sabbath breaking, turn away from your idolatry, turn away from your stealing, turn away from your lying, turn away from all of these things and repent and believe upon the Lord Jesus and you will get the gift of eternal life. That's what's in the gospel. That's what Jesus has secured for us by his life and by his death and by his resurrection. It is so sad today to see so many people on the street being occupied with something that doesn't really matter at the end of the day. This is the most ultimate item, subject that you can possibly discuss and think about. It is the salvation of your never dying eternal soul. Every one of you, every one of you as you pass by, you have a priceless possession. What is it? It is your soul. It is your soul. Your soul shall live forever. One day your body shall die. It is appointed unto man once to die. 
and after this the judgment. But when you die, friends, what happens to your soul? Your soul returns to God who gave it to you in the first place and you will be judged. And if you're not in Christ, if you don't have Christ as your Lord and Savior, you shall be condemned. But if Christ is your Lord, if Christ is your Savior, then you will enter into heaven. You will be with him forever and forever. And that's why we want to come out this afternoon on this cold Saturday afternoon to tell you about this glorious person. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. O oh, young people, as you pass by, you think you've got all your life to live, you think you've got many years, and you think to yourself, well, I'll consider the claims of Christ when I get older. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to get right with God. Now that you hear his voice in the gospel, now is the time when you seek the Lord. We don't have tomorrows. We don't know. Life can be very short. Life can be very brief. Life can be very uncertain. Is that not true? What is our life? It is but a vapor. You've seen the kettle boil, have you not? You've seen the steam rise from the spout of the kettle. That's what your life is like. The steam rises up and it disappears into the, to the atmosphere. That's your life. We're here today and we're gone tomorrow. And soon the place thereof shall know us no more. Teach us to number our days, the Bible says. Therefore we must seek the Lord whilst he may be found. You are to call upon him now. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Young people, now's the time to seek the Lord. Now's the time to close in with Christ. Now's the time to repent. Now's the time to turn your backs upon an evil lifestyle and seek the Lord. What a glorious reward to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. What a gracious thing, what a lovely thing it is to have Christ as our Lord and Savior, to be under his lordship and kingship, to be part of his kingdom. It's a glorious thing to be a Christian. It's a glorious thing to belong to Christ. It is the highest honor that God can bestow upon man to have Christ as your Lord and Savior. And as you pass by this afternoon, you need to consider these things because one day these things will become the most important thing in your, in your life. How will you fare when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ? The Bible tells us there's going to come a day when we will stand before him. Let me read to you one or two verses from 2 Corinthians. You'll find it in your Bibles. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men. That's why we're here this afternoon in the cold to persuade men and women and boys and girls that they are to follow the Lord Jesus Christ today. Today, today is the day of salvation. You don't know how many todays you will have. The gospel is offered to you. The Savior is offered to you. You are commanded in the Bible. God commands all men everywhere to repent. He commands all the people in Buchanan Street this afternoon through the preaching of the gospel to repent and to believe the gospel. This is the day of grace. This is when God is speaking through his word and through his servants. He is telling you, he is offering you grace and mercy and love on his terms. You cannot go to God and barter. You cannot go to God and negotiate. 
He is offering salvation on his terms, and his terms are that you repent, forsake your evil ways, and believe upon the God-appointed Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. What does he offer? What does he offer in return? He offers that your sins are forgiven, all of your sins. Oh, what a burden you're carrying with you, that guilty conscience you have. Well, when you come to Christ, and when your sins are forgiven, friends, that burden is taken away. It's rolled off your back, as it were, metaphorically. It is taken away, and you have peace, peace with God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Something that you don't have if you're outside of Christ. Something that no other religion or person can give you. It doesn't matter how devout you are. It doesn't matter what religion you follow. It doesn't matter how many good works you perform. It doesn't matter how many charities you support. If you're not in Christ, your sins cannot be forgiven and therefore you cannot be right with God. And that's why it's so important that we bring this message to you. I think you will agree that most people today never enter in to a Christian place of worship. Sad, but that is true. Very often, people never go to a Christian place of worship and they never hear about the Lord Jesus. And even if they do go to a Christian place of worship, very often they never hear the authentic gospel. Friends, we want to address that issue today, and we want to tell you about Christ. This is what Christianity is all about. It's not about rules. It's not about regulations. It's not about religion. It's about a person. It's about Jesus. It is about the Lord Jesus Christ that great and that glorious person, the Son of God, who became the Son of Man in order that he would be able to suffer, in order that he would be able to lay down his life and to offer up his life as a once-for-all perfect sacrifice to make atonement for sin. And this is the most glorious story in the whole world, and we want to use all our efforts and all our talents to bring this message to you that you might know of Christ and that you might call upon him that he might be your Lord and your Savior and that he might take you to heaven. He's the one who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Don't rely on our priest. Don't rely on the Pope. Don't rely on Muhammad. Don't rely on Confucius. Don't rely on any religious teacher. It doesn't matter. You must be in Christ. You must have him as your Lord and as your Savior. Otherwise you're lost. Otherwise you'll perish. Oh no, sir, it's not rubbish. It's glorious. It's wonderful. It's life transforming. It's life from the dead. No. Examine it yourself. Look into the Word of God. You will see it is true. You cannot deny that Jesus came. Time has been divided because of his coming. You cannot de deny that his teachings have had tremendous impact all throughout the world. And indeed, our own nation has been rooted and grounded in Christianity and it has been blessed as a result of it. You cannot deny Christ. You cannot deny his claims. You cannot deny his authority. You cannot deny that he is the one who has come from heaven in order to seek and to save that which was lost. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Oh, young people, you think you've got all your life before you. And we hope indeed that you do have. But now's the time to commit your life to Christ. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. 
while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. You know, there's nothing like being a Christian, and there's nothing like being a, a young Christian, to devote your young life to this wonderful person, this one who devoted himself to mankind, this one who came to suffer and to die in order to provide a salvation for you and I. And that's why we're here this afternoon to tell you about this person. And as you go by, I see your heads wagging, I see your eyes squinting, I see the reaction, I can read your hearts. But friends, this is life, this is the truth. People are looking for the truth today and you'll only find it in Christ. Pilate said to Jesus, what is truth? This is truth. Here we have God's infallible word. His word that shall not change. And this word that tells us about the Lord Jesus and what he has done in order to save sinners. Ah, but you don't like being called a sinner. Neither do I. Neither do I. But that's the sad reality. In the sight of God, we are like sheep who have gone astray, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. None. None of us. No matter how good we live our lives. No matter... You see, friends, Jesus said, when he summed up the Ten Commandments, he said, this is how they are to be summed up. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's how he summed up the Ten Commandments. Have you ever done that? Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength? Do you love your neighbor as yourself? No. Is it not true we're all by nature, we're selfish? We love ourselves above everything else. We love ourselves more than our neighbor, and we love ourselves more than God. That's why the Bible tells us we're all sinners. And because God is a holy God, thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil and canst not look upon iniquity. That's, that's how the Bible describes God. One who is pure, who cannot look upon iniquity, and he cannot look upon us in our natural states. That's why he has sent the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Why should I shut up? Why should I shut up? Someone has just told me to shut up. No, let's just open our mouths. Let's just raise our voices. Let's just tell people about Jesus, about what he has done. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. That's the great mission of the Lord Jesus. He's on a mercy mission, and he has sent out gospel preachers to make this message widely known widely known because is it not true you never go to the house of god you never go to a place where christian worship is conducted you never hear the bible read or the bible proclaimed that's why we're here friends to bring you the good news of the gospel we're here from partick free church of scotland continuing we'd love to see you we meet at 2 Thornwood Terrace. We meet tomorrow, the Lord's Day, 11 a.m. And again at 6.30 p.m. Come along and you'll hear something 
concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless his word to you.